Hello guys, welcome back once again to my channel. We are going to discuss one more exam paper with two LAQs and multiple short answer questions which also are scenario based, right? Thank you Dr. Kritika for sharing this paper. It's a paper from Tamil Nadu Medical MJ University. Hopefully some of these questions will come in your exam and will help you to easily diagnose and solve things, right? Let's jump into it. As usual, don't forget to put on a big smile. Let's learn. So first question, it's a very simple one. A 50 year old male, polyuria, polydipsia, HP1 is 8.2. Please don't jump and start writing the exam as diabetes mellitus. Read the question completely. He also had, had oliguria and puffiness of face. Diabetes mellitus is undoubtedly right. But the complete diagnosis here will be diabetes mellitus complicated with diabetic nephropathy because this is a renal related symptom. If you look at the entire follow-up question, it is also as the underlying pathogenesis and its complication. Talk about age products, the KW lesion, right, the diffuse closures, everything, which is pertaining to diabetic nephropathy, fine. Diabetes is an important topic. Please do revise, especially in the second paper for you, okay? Next question, a 15-year-old male, a person with a light declination in the lower end of femur, X-ray revealed a Codman's triangle, sunray appearance, classical X-ray features of, perfect, and osteosarcoma, right? There's a very, very classical X-ray picture of an osteosarcoma, Diagnosis there. What are the genetic alterations? Please do write about retinoblastoma gene. That's the most important thing. MDM1 retinoblastoma genes are classical things altered in case of an uh, osteosarcoma. Okay, and the morphology of the lesion, you know that. Classify the bone tumors, add imaging findings of various bone tumors. When they say imaging finding, include the epiphyseal, metaphyseal, diaphyseal, then individual thing like soap bubble appearance, like Codman's triangle, those also please include them. That will solve the second question here, fine. Let's go to the next one. A 50 year old person, sudden death in the autops autopsy of the heart reveal a grey white area in the autopsy of the heart. Fine. In the left ventricle, what's your diagnosis? It's an old infarct. If something is going to be grey white, it cannot be a fresh infarct, right? So the age of the infarct here most likely should be easily more than 10 to 14 days because grey white is equal to scar tissue, right? It has to be a scar tissue. Should be something more than 10 to 14 days, could be like two years, three years, whatever it is. It's an old infarct. I cannot say anything beyond that for the timeline. Anything more than 10 to 14 days, it should be an old infarct, fine? Let's go to the next one. Just give me a second. Let's pull this guy a little bit up. Okay, let's start. A 55-year-old chronic smoker, persistent productive cough for three months, okay? Similar episode in the last year too, consecutive years, right? Which disease you will categorize them and briefly write about the pathogenesis. This is a cl classical history of chronic bronchitis, right? COPD, chronic bronchitis would be the appropriate classification and we put them into chronic bronchitis. Rip, a cough for three months for two years is classical history or definition of chronic bronchitis, right? Next, a 30-year-old male with LOS discussion of conjunctiva had history of blood transfusion multiple units in the recent few months due to a road traffic accident as an emergency. Now, it's important, don't mistake this as hemolytic anemia. Just because there's a multiple unit transfusion doesn't make it a hemolytic anemia. The reason for the transfusion is road traffic accident. Obviously, when there's a trauma, when there's a blood loss, multiple units should be given, right? That has nothing to do with hemolytic anemia. And please don't mistake, okay, jaundice is there, so it should be hemolytic anemia, right? Jaundice could be due to many things. So the most probable answer here is, the patient is a 30-year-old healthy person, had a road traffic accident, got a multiple transfusion, so it's by default, some of the transfusion-related infections should have come, that has caused hepatitis, and that has caused the jaundice. So this most likely answer could be an hepatitis B virus or an hepatitis C virus, an acute hepatitis related due to the faulty blood transfusion given. That should be the most appropriate answer here. This is not a case of an hemolytic anemia. Please be sure about it, fine? The next, 30 year old person, person with heartburns, dyspepsia, breath test was confirmed uh, for the diagnosis. What's your diagnosis? Breath test, right? That's classical, H. pylori gastritis, fine? So it's a classical case of an H. pyloric acid it is. Urease blood test is the blood test which you're talking about. Take inputs both from microbiology and pathology before uh, writing this answer, right? Next, acidic flow surgery, I'm going to ignore it. Last one is a clinical scenario again. 15-year-old female present with unilateral ovarian mass. Gross examination revealed had in it. Hair, epidermis, dermis, teeth, all the three components is a classical case of an teratoma, right? As a classical case of a teratoma, that's the last scenario here. Like I said in the start, it's a very good question paper with quite a good amount of clinical scenarios. Hopefully some of them will help in your exam paper. If you have anything to comment, any questions to ask, put in the comment box, let's discuss and learn more pathology and medicine together. Bye-bye.